two-time PBA champion and World Masters champion Chris Barnes. Let's meet our coaches for the Increase Your Average DVD collection. Hi, I'm Carolyn Doran Ballard, USBC Director of Coaching. She wanted it. Hi, I'm Kim Terrell Kearney, Assistant Coach for Team USA. Hi, I'm Rod Ross. I'm a head coach at Team USA. Yes! Yes! The importance of spare shooting cannot be overstated. That's high. Many spares are made or missed before you even release the ball. Knowing the angle of attack and having a system that you trust. Hello! Knocks it down! Can turn you into a great spare shooter who can instantly shift the momentum of a game. If you're not a good spare shooter, you will often be a frustrated bowler. Lots of times this can be from being a little bit lazy after throwing so many strikes in these high scoring conditions that your feet are just not in the right place to take advantage of that extra oil in the middle of the lane. Our coaches are gonna show you a spare shooting system that will help you take advantage of that extra oil and make more spares with confidence. Having a spare system that you can count on will erase the doubt from your mind and will definitely improve your spare shooting. All right, having a spare system is crucial for bowling in today's league conditions. Being able to adjust and having a system that you know that you can make the moves to pick those spares is very critical whether you're bowling in league and or tournament. Spares is very crucial. It doesn't matter whether the shot is easy, whether you're in a tournament condition. That is the thing that can add pins to your game and that could be the difference in winning a match Win your game for league, doesn't matter. It's the thing that adds pins to your game. So what we're gonna show you today is a simple system based off seven moves, based off seven columns or rows of pins that you can make your adjustments and know how to pick your spare. And it's all gonna be based off your starting position for your strike ball. The key to the sparing system too is it doesn't matter whether you're a high rev player or a low rev player, throw it straight. Doesn't matter, spares are crucial for everybody. Correct, and this system is, it works, like Carolyn says, works for everybody, no matter if you're playing second arrow or third arrow, you can make the adjustments and pick these spares. We have Brian now lined up on lane 10. He's been able to execute quite a few shots, standing 27 and looking and hitting third arrow. But now Brian missed a little outside and left the five pin. Well, the five pin's part of column or row four, which would be the head pin and the five pin. The adjustment for the five pin is gonna be standing in the same position and hit the third arrow. For Brian, that is gonna be 27 to third arrow or 15. lined up. She's standing on 17 looking at 10 and that is her strike target. Although she's playing a different part of the lane than Brian, she can still use the sparing system for zone 4 using the 1-5 target off of her strike shot. Brian Hatt now has left the 2-8 spare. That is gonna be what we call row three or column three. To pick the spare, Brian needs to move three boards to his right with his feet. And his original target was third arrow, so now he will go a half an arrow to the left. So it'd be between third and fourth arrow.
Teresa now is going to use zone two spare shooting to make the four pin. She will now move six off of her original strike target. She started at 17. She will now stand on 11. She will now look somewhere at the 12 or 13 board to make the spare. Brian has now left the seven pin, which is going to be in zone one. To pick the zone one spare, Brian needs to move nine boards to the right, which will take him to 18. And again, his target only moves a half an arrow to the left from a strike position, which will be between third and fourth arrow. For Teresa to make the spares in the zone one area, she will move a full nine boards to the right off her original strike target, which was 17. She is now standing on eight. Her original target was the second arrow, which was 10. She will now move her eyes where she has been between the second and third arrow, which is a half an arrow move to the left. So it could be somewhere between the 12 board or the 13 board. For spares in zones 5, 6, and 7, we need to move to the left with our feet and we're going to be changing our eyes on the lane. This is where the system changes. We move four boards to the left for each zone or row of spare that we leave and we also move a half an arrow to the left with the move. So Brian started on 27, he will move to 31 on this spare and move a half an arrow which is going to be going between the third and fourth arrow. For spares on the right side of the lane, once again, it doesn't matter whether you're a high rev rate player like Brian or a straighter player like Teresa. We are going to use the same zone system and just make the moves accordingly. For zone five spares, Teresa is going to move four boards to the left off of her original target, which was 17. She's now standing on 21, and she is moving her eye target a half an arrow to the left of where she started, which was the 10 board. She will now look somewhere at the 12 or 13 board to make the spare. Brian is now going to shoot at the six pin, which is actually in zone six. Being that this is on the right hand side, zones five, six, and seven, we continually want to move for each zone four boards to the left. For zone six, Brian is going to want to move eight boards to the left. He also wants to move another half an arrow from zone five. So Brian's original target was the third arrow. His target now be the fourth arrow. Teresa will now shoot at a six pin, which is in zone six. She will move a full eight boards to the left off her original starting position. Starting with 17, she is now on 25, and she will move another half an arrow left. So her eyes will now be on the third arrow, the 15 board.
Brian now is going to shoot at the 10 pin, which is at zone 7. For zone 7 spares, we want to move 12 boards to the left from our starting position. Brian started on 27. He will now be moving to 39. For each one of the columns, 5, 6, or 7, we continually move a half an arrow. So Brian now will be looking between the 4th and 5th arrow. To make the 10 pin, we're going to move a full 12 boards to the left, which now puts Teresa on the 29 board. She is going to move her eye target a half an arrow left, which will be between the 15 and 20 board, around the 17, 18th board. Remember, very important, as you move your feet to the left, continue to move your eyes that half an arrow left. The seven zone spare system was designed for bowling on house conditions or the local conditions you're going to see at your bowling center during league. But sometimes you're going to find that getting that 10 pin is pretty difficult that you have a hard time getting the ball far enough over. As you can see, Teresa has made the move for her zone seven spare, but she is having difficulty getting that ball far enough over for the 10 pin. It wants to hook away. The reason for that is the bowling balls today are very aggressive and they are definitely designed to hook. So the option we would highly recommend is that you get yourself a spare ball, a ball that will go quite a bit straighter. You can still utilize the system, but it's going to enable that ball to get over there and pick up that 10 pin. There are left-handed bowlers, right-handed bowlers, high arm swings, and low, and all sorts of ways to get to the line. Even at the highest level, like here on Team USA, you'll see a little bit of everything, but the most important things like balance, posture, and good angles, well, those are always there. In this section, we'll help you with the physical game. Some of the key elements that separate average bowlers from great bowlers at any level are the ability to maintain your posture, your body angles and balance at the foul line. Now I see a lot of players sacrifice these things in the effort to gain more revolutions and have more power. But in the end, the truth is that if you maintain your body angle and your posture and keep balance at the foul line, your rev rate will go up, your accuracy will go up, you'll be more versatile, and most importantly, your average will be higher. For league bowling, it is very important that you get your angles preset for the style of bowler that you are to enable yourself to be more consistent down the lane. We're going to have three styles of bowlers. We have a, a tweener. We have a straighter player and a high rev rate player. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate with those three types of players how they would actually play the house condition and by presetting the launch angles to the front or in their stance enables them to be more consistent. Here we have Teresa, our straighter player, and this is an example of how we would want to have her body position at the finish. Being straighter, we want her shoulders and her hips square to this launch angle. We want to preset that in the beginning of her approach. So in order to accomplish the proper angle at the point of release, we want Teresa to have her shoulders square, her hips square, and her ball side foot square with her left foot. This way she'll be able to duplicate that at the finish position. Here we have Steven, our tweener. He doesn't have quite the high rev rate that Brian does, but not as straight as Teresa. What we've done is we've created the position we want to have him so that he's, he's, his angles match his launch angle. So he's slightly open at the shoulders, at the hip, and at the feet. And this is the angle that I wanted him to have throughout his approach. So we're going to go back to the front of the approach and see how we want to preset those angles. So unlike Teresa, Steven, our, our kind of tweener player, our middle of the road player, we want to make sure that we've preset his angles to accommodate his ball roll or his style of play. So we want to have his shoulders slightly more open, his hips a little bit more open, and then drop that ball side foot back just a hair.
Ryan is our high rev player, and he's going to play the lane substantially farther left than our other two players, and he's going to be taking it from left to right. So he's going to be sliding approximately about 35, 37, so he's going to be wanting to project the ball over the fourth arrow. So we do not want Brian square because he can never get the ball out to the right. So Brian is going to be very open. This is the angle we need Brian to preset in the start so he can have this projection angle through the front part of the lane when he delivers the ball. Okay, because of the launch angle that Brian is going, is going to be a good stream from left to right. We don't want him in square. He's going to have to open up his body. He's going to have to take his right shoulder, his right hip, and his right foot back. The ball position is still going to be the same, but he needs to have this angle to project the ball from left to right. Now that we've had our three style of players and we preset their angles playing the house shot, let's take a look at the data. Down here in the bottom on the red line we have right here, this was Teresa. Teresa's a straighter player or a lower rev rate player. What we did is we preset her angles so that she's square to the lane. And uh, up here a little bit higher on the black line right here, we have Brian, which is our high rev, our hook player. And as you can see, he's playing much more angle through the front part of the lane. As he gets down to the lane, they're still playing the lane pretty much similar, but he's going to have to preset his angle substantially more than Teresa because of that launch angle through the front. And then the blue line is Steven. He's a bit of a tweener, we would call, a little bit in between the both. And we preset him. He's slightly more open than Teresa, but not nearly as open as Brian was. So what we want to show you is that you want to make sure that you control your angles, presetting your launch angle through the front part of the lane. It helps you project the ball to the point down the lane that you want to get more strikes. When you're bowling your league, you want to make sure that you can initiate a good, clean, and consistent start. One of the problems that we see a lot of times here in the training center is bowlers have been taught to walk straight up the lane or walk towards their target. But there's some several disadvantages to that. Right. We want to make sure that you're getting the ball into the swing in the right way. We want that swing plane to be consistent. And oftentimes when you're walking with one foot in front of the other, we start to see just a variance in the swing plane. We want more consistency there. And so one of the ways that we work on that here at the training center is we use this tape to kind of help players get a feel for where they want that crossover step to land. So we'll use uh, painter's tape because it's non-marking. It gives us a visual reference so that we can keep track of where our feet work, our footwork is going. What you'll see a lot of times for some bowlers is they will step directly forward. They think they're walking straight, and they are walking straight, but our leg's in the way for the swing. What we want to see is want to see a step in front of your slide foot. That is actually truly walking straight right into the box. It doesn't matter whether you're a four-step or a five-step. A five-step, you would step and still step front of our slide foot. This will improve your consistency and your overall swing repeatability. Here we have Teresa and she's going to demonstrate what a lot of league bowlers do when they're told to walk towards their target or walk straight up the lane. On this shot, we're going to demonstrate what we would like to see Teresa do is we want her to have a crossover step or step in front of her sliding foot, enable her to have room for her swing to increase her accuracy. Posture is one of the things that we really look closely at here at the ITRC. How consistent you are at the start and as you get into your pivot step and into the slide. So when we talk about posture, we're really talking about from the hips up to the shoulders. And we're looking, and we call it the pivot step, it's the step before the slide. We want to see that posture maintained. Once you get to the top of your backswing and as you go into the slide, everything should be lower body. You're going to have your posture or the angle from your head, your neck to your hip being consistent. We don't want to see a collapse or a pulling back. This creates an inconsistency of break point, inconsistency of launch angle, and it goes the difference between going high and light. Brian's going to demonstrate consistent posture. 
see his from his head down to his hips, everything stayed consistent throughout his approach. Yeah, and that enables you to have a consistent shot and launch angle and leverage at the finish position. On this shot, we're going to see Brian kind of get in a position where he gets collapsed at the finish. We see this with a lot of bowlers. As you notice there, his posture as he went into the finish collapsed forward. He lost leverage on the bowling ball. You'll see bowling balls sometimes go boom, boom into the lane because the upper body just collapsed into the lane at the finish position. Every so often, we'll see players get to the foul line and really rear back when they release the ball. You see this a lot from players, they're trying to get some extra stuff on the ball or trying to make the ball hook and actually they actually make the break point go closer to her. They have less hit on the back end, less power and a lot of inconsistency. We see this quite often. What we use this for is we have accelerometers sitting on Brian. It measures the X, Y, Z coordinates of those accelerometers so we can know the position and time of where his body's at. A lot of players think that they're consistent in their start and their finish, but we can get this down to one degree to be able to measure how consistent they are. We've already calibrated it for Brian, and notice here that it's in the red. If Brian gets into a stance, it will turn green. As he moves out slightly, it will turn to a red which means he's out of the calibration, and that's based off five degrees, which is quite a bit of movement. Okay, now we're gonna be using our vest to see his consistency of his posture in the stance and the start. A lot of players end up losing their posture after they initiate the ball start. So we're gonna have Brian go through the first step and try to maintain posture. This was a very good shot right here. If he moves a little bit more, it gets into the red. It's gonna be hard to repeat. This is a very good practice drill that we do here at the training center.